Moving on, the U.S. Congress is set to start voting on a massive military policy bill, including authorization of up to $10 billion in security aid and fast-tracked weapons procurement for Taiwan. However, the compromised version of the annual National Defense Authorization Act, or the NDAA, does not include some controversial provisions that Taiwan lawmakers proposed this year. Some of the provisions were to include sanctions in the event of significant escalation in aggression against Taiwan by China. And a proposal that Taiwan be treated as a major non-NATO ally. China considers Taiwan its territory. This comes despite the fact that there is a concern within President Joe Biden's administration that the bill could heighten tensions with China. The $858 billion military policy bill is expected to pass Congress and be signed into law this month. The Taiwan Enhanced Resilience Act grants assistance for Taiwan up to $2 billion per year from 2023 through 2027. Meanwhile, Taiwan's foreign ministry expressed its gratitude towards the United States for the continued strong support for Taiwan's security. Meanwhile, with an eye on the growing tensions in the Indo-Pacific, the United States is likely to deploy more ships and submarines to Australia, vowing a united front in the face of China's rapid military advances. The U.S. and Australia and the United Kingdom, part of the AUKUS group, also agreed to welcome Japanese troops into the three-way rotations after an annual 2 plus 2 meeting between the two allies. The U.S. and Australia reaffirmed their commitment to maintain the status quo over Taiwan. The developments are in line with the latest report that claims that more than two-thirds of Australia's territory is within China's missile range. A recent document submitted to Australia reportedly contains a map showing areas of Australia that are vulnerable to future Chinese strikes. There are several artificial reefs and atolls in the South China Sea. These reportedly allow China to launch land-based, intermediate-range ballistic missile strikes towards Australian territory. The latest submission reportedly states that the mischief reef atoll, 3,000 kilometers northwest of Darwin, is particularly concerning. This establishes a ring range across several Australian Defence Force sites in Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia. Right, for more on this, joining us now is Robert Bell, Distinguished Professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology. He joins us live from Brussels. Thanks for joining us, Professor. My first question, now the U.S. Congress is set to vote on a massive military policy bill, including authorization of up to $10 billion, and the focus, of course, is weapons procurement for Taiwan. Tell us more about what this entails. The National Defense Authorization Act is an annual piece of legislation that in which the Congress sets sort of the upper limit of the amount of foreign military assistance and other defense issues that the government can execute in the next uh, fiscal year. So traditionally, the United States has provided Taiwan consistent with agreements that we have going back to President Nixon uh, and the People's Republic that we will help sustain Taiwan's ability to defend itself. Uh, these weapons are quite sophisticated and very high tech and hence very expensive. So the 10 billion figure is a big number. But as you pointed out, uh, Priyanka, that if you break that up, it's about 2 billion per year. And that, that will pay for some important weapons, but it's not a fundamental shift in the equation. Right. And some of the provisions that have been mentioned were to include sanctions in the event of a significant escalation or rather aggression by China when it comes to Taiwan. So how will that play out? There's always a debate on sanctions policy about how much you specifically threaten in advance and how much you generally warn of but withhold and, and hope to your deterrence works. Uh, obviously, were China to invade and try to take over Taiwan, the U.S. would impose uh, draconian sanctions in many, many different areas. The, the question here was one of tactics. The White House would prefer to make a general threat and not have the Congress try to itemize what sanctions would be imposed uh, before an invasion took place. Right. Professor Bell, thank you so much for all those insights and thanks for joining us on the broadcast. You're welcome. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.